After the announced slowdown of the Philippine economy Thursday, Malacanang says, if the economy must suffer because of President Rodrigo Duterte's environmental protection policies, such as the Boracay closure, then so be it. And he has given a, prior, pro, a further priority, higher priority to the protection of the environment, and he makes no apologies for it. If GDP will further fall because of the desire of the president to protect the environment, so be it. We're investing in the future and not just in the present. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the Boracay shutdown is a justified policy, even if it contributed to lower than expected economic growth in the second quarter of the year. Roque says 6% economic growth is still very high, even if below the 6.6% to 7% market expectations and the government's 7 to 8% target. I don't think it is alarming because 6% is still high. <laughs> People do not forget that we may not have met the market, the, the target, but 6% is very high. So putting things in perspective. Malacanang also insists all cabinet members are on board with Duterte's bid for federalism, despite at least two economic managers publicly expressing concern about the shift based on the consultative committee's proposed draft charter. I think there's 100% agreement that we are pushing for federalism. The exact mechanics of how to do it, well, no one can claim a monopoly. Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez cited the confusing fiscal provisions in the CONCOM draft charter. On Wednesday, he said it would cause the country's hard-earned investment grade ratings to go to hell and hurt the economy. Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Ernesto Perna earlier said a shift to federalism would wreak havoc on the economy because it could cause a spike in the fiscal deficit. These statements from Dominguez and Pernia made CONCOM member Father Angelio Aquino call on Duterte to fire them or order them to temper their statements about federalism. In a Facebook post, Aquino says, if he favors federalism, let him sack Dominguez and Pernia or command them to keep their traps shut. Malacanang on Thursday says the framework for joint development of resources in the West Philippine Sea between the Philippines and China may be finalized before Chinese President Xi Jinping's Manila visit late 2018. A Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says she might head to Manila after the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Papua New Guinea in mid-November. No time frame po, but of course, because of the impending uh, visit of President Xi, I would say that... Uh, it is any time between now and the visit of President Xi, but it was not expressly stated as such. Roque says Manila and Beijing earlier held talks on a bilateral agreement that would enable the joint exploration to happen in the West Philippine Sea. The Philippines and China have agreed on a 60-40 profit-sharing arrangement in favor of the Philippines. Foreign Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano earlier said Duterte allowed him to form a working group on the proposed joint exploration in the West Philippine Sea. The working group will help the government negotiate with China, though the government will leave the contract negotiation to the commercial entities. However, former President Benigno Aquino earlier warned that the proposed 60-40 arrangement could end up as disadvantageous to the Philippines. Metro residents chime in online on the latest plan of the Metro Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, to ease traffic. In a bid to decongest EDSA, Metro Manila mayors agreed to ban driver-only cars from the major thoroughfare during rush hour. The reactions came in various forms, but it's not clear if these will be enough to make the agency rethink the plan. Some describe the plan as a cheap, inefficient alternative to actually finding a permanent solution to traffic. The government should focus on long-term fixes in public transportation instead. Other users share the same sentiment, saying the plan discriminates against private car owners. Last month, the Metro Manila Council, composed of Metro Manila mayors, approved a policy banning provincial buses from plying EDSA. This was supposed to take effect in July, but was moved to August 15, pending the completion of a new bus terminal in Valenzuela City. Barangay Hinebra slams the door shut on San Miguel's hopes of a Grand Slam by taking home the 2018 PBA Commissioner's Cup title. Inspired by a crowd of 20,490, the Jin Kings used a fiery second-half assault 
to dethrone the beer men in six games of the best of seven affair with a 93-77 decision at the Mall of Asia Arena Wednesday, August 8. The Jin King started the conference with a disappointing 1-5 record before going on an eight-game winning streak up to the semifinals. Tim Cohn says, Who would have thought that we've been able to win this series? And who would have thought that we can win it in six games? I'm amazed at the resilience of our players, the fight, and the battle. Thailand grants citizenship to stateless members of the football team rescued from a cave last month. The United Nations Refugee Agency says Thailand is home to around 480,000 stateless people. The family of one of the four footballers granted papers, Adul Som On, is from Myanmar's Wa State, a self-governing region. Weeks after the rescue, interest in their ordeal is still strong and Hollywood-style production houses are racing to take the story to the big screen. But authorities have asked media to keep their distance while the teammates readjust to normal life and avoid touching off lingering trauma. The dangerous rescue brought all 13 members of the team to safety. But a former Thai Navy SEAL diver died while installing oxygen tanks in preparation for the extraction. 